So, um, hi everyone. <laughs> so that's what's it. Thank you. <laughs> now, I'm. Uh, this is Amelie. Uh, this is a, a research engineer focused on Grease Pencil at Lefe Special, and I'm Flavio, uh, the uh, the CTO of the company, and. Um, we are going to present um, uh, two open scenes we have been creating and that we are going to share. Um, we are starting with our, uh, I will just show you our demo reel for the animation demo reel we have made for the conference. Everything you are going to see is made on Blender, of course, except for one project, which is animated in Krita. That's, it happens. And I mean, we needed uh, some more, more bitmap style animation. So anyway, so yeah, this is the demo reel. So we are an uh, animation studio based in Montpellier, in the south of France. Um, we have been working and sharing open source tools since eight years. Uh, we have been doing a couple of uh, already conferences or so. Um, and we have been putting Blender in the core of our pipeline. There are some spoilers, but <laughs> we're going to show you. Um, there is cutout stuff and keyframe stuff. It's a mix of stuff. You can see here 3D. Helping out of the menu also. Yeah. We like these hybrid images uh, mixing 2D and 3D, as, as you can see here. Um, POV image. So, yeah, anyway. Um, <laughs> In our studio, uh, the research and development uh, department is working on creating tools and tailor-made for uh, the projects of our clients. And, and today, uh, this is the Krita project. <laughs> and today we are going to talk about the importance of open scenes and test material for 2D animation. Um, in, the, in the 3D world, the 3D research world, models have been used for decades for testing uh, and research aspects, such as shading, you know, these kind of models, basic lighting features. I mean, this scene, you have probably seen dozens of times or hundreds of times. And even if it looks simple, it focuses on very specific aspects such as bouncing lights and refraction and stuff like that. There is not much artistic value on, on this kind of uh, scenes, but they are very important for technical uh, research and development. But that's not the point or, or this one. Uh, this is a remake of one other scene which is very used. Uh, you also all know this one by Christophe Seu, uh, some scenes are created by companies, some by the community or universities, and the classroom can be used for uh, learning or test render engines or uh, doing uh, benchmarks, for example, or doing the Grease Pencil 3 demo this morning. Um, so benchmarking hardware and software also can be part of these missions. Uh, on this one, this heavy scene made by Disney to test USB pipelines and render engines with millions of, uh, of objects. Uh, so there are R&D, uh, the 3D R&D benefits a lot from good resources for this kind of stuff in corporate to compare. Uh, and this is only a, sh a limited list, but um, what about 2D? Uh, what about 2D? <laughs> so, uh, hello everyone. <laughs> in 2D, uh, there are also resources that are available mostly for image processing. So I, I am sure you know this picture that's been used in many uh, benchmarking of algorithm. Uh, uh, so that's a photo, of course, uh, and the internet is full of them. And some of them are like free for uh, use to test and research and stuff like this. Uh, when it comes to sketches, it gets a little bit trickier. Um, actually, there's a recent paper, a research paper that's been done, and they have been collecting this full database of uh, sketches, black and white sketches, in order to benchmark uh, rough sketch cleanup uh, algorithms. So you can see that there's kind of a need to have uh, this kind of uh, resources. And when it comes to 2D animation, it's even trickier because for a sketch, at least, if you have some knowledge of how to draw or know someone, it might uh, not be that difficult to get this material. But for a 2D animation, you know that uh, it takes much time, much energy, and in, at the end, much money to like just have a test for just one algorithm. So we identified that there was a need to have this kind of scenes that are purposed for technical reasons. Um, and 
one of the things that we might do is use the projections that we have at the studio, the animation that we have, but the problem we can, came across last year is that uh, we couldn't use most of, uh, <laughs> like some of the images. So we had to blur a, a small character like this one. And uh, also, so this is a video that of the conference I made last, last year about a stroke mapping algorithm. So it was up, um, to apply uh, patterns on the dress of the, the character here. And also at, at the end of this development, we felt the need to push a bit the algorithm to try to make it work on more folded shapes and maybe other shapes than just closing. But at this point, we didn't have any animation that had all these folds and uh, you know that's difficult to animate in 2D. So we were thinking that, can we create a scene that uh, serves this purpose? And as a, uh, while we do it, maybe we can include some other constraints and other things that we want to test right now or in the future. So we started to uh, just something, we could have used also the blend, grease, pencil, grease pencil blender open scenes, uh, which uh, I don't know if you know this page, it's really uh, helpful. Uh, if you don't know how to uh, get it, there's a little demo on how to access it from the Blender website <laughs> because it might be a bit tricky sometimes. Um, so that's really useful. It's a really good showcase of the tool, the Grease Pencil tool, but it's not very tailored for technical testing. And sometimes you can find animations that have characters in them that uh, have IP and you cannot really use them. So we started to make a list of uh, what, we, what do we want in this animation sequence. <laughs> so of course that's a lot, <laughs> but we didn't, didn't want to put any limits in the first thought that we had. Um, and then we had a brainstorm with our uh, more artistic team to see what can be done with all of this. And we selected a bunch of um, constraints and uh, criteria. So you can see that there's still a lot of them, but we removed some because you can't really do everything at once. Um, and at this point on the talk, I want to thank the CNC, which is the National Center for the Cinema and the Moving Image. It's the French agency responsible for the production and promotion of cinematic and audiovisual arts in France. And they are funding our research program project on grease pencil tools, and they agreed uh, that part of this funding will be uh, used for artists to, the, to like, create these scenes that uh, you're going to see. So I'm going to leave it to Flavio. <laughs> so let's deep, in, deep dive on what we did. So uh, starting from this list of constraints, we asked Lea, Lea our, uh, creative, uh, our, one of the, our creative director in the studio, to create a character. She was free to create anything. Uh, and, and she presented Billy. Uh, Billy, she's a woman with the character effects uh, features such as the dress or the hair. Uh, she has a prop, which is a 3D longboard. Um, there, will, there are details also that we are not animating that will come later on, on, on the process, which um, are, for example, the little stars on the dress or, or the tattoo on the, on the back of, you know, these kind of details you remove from 2D animation because they are too painful to draw and animate in the form. Uh, one of our goals with last year Mafalda uh, uh, test was to bring back details which are very time consuming to animate. So, so um, yeah, that will come later. And, and then uh, we asked um, Camille, our animation, uh, one of our animation, uh, animators to, to start working. So we, what we are going to see is what we bring in, this, in the scene which, are, which is now on, available online. So this is the first step. Uh, this is the rough animation. We have we left also all the little doodles uh, she did. So maybe someone will be interested by to see the process. Um, to ch and, in, and even attitude and stuff. So we have this back and forth with us to see if it was good. So we changed the perspective to have this profile view instead of a more uh, three quarter view and stuff like that. Uh, so this is the primary keyframes and secondary animation in this layer here, I mean, this grease pencil object. Then in the next step is what we call the tie down. So we go through the animation, through the rough animation, and we make it more detailed and precise. This includes checking the vo if the volumes are uh, correctly uh, uh, following 
and the, the, the model and there is no bad distortions and stuff like that. I mean, this is completely the basic uh, 2D workflow here. Uh, we left also all the annotations um, before going to the ink and, and paint departments. And for example, all the red annotations here, the sharks are made for the ink uh, in paint department to include the, the missing frames, the in-betweens, which is needed to be drawn later. Um, and this is the ink and paint uh, made by Colleen. Um, ink and paint is the art of choosing the right brush. I mean, here there is only one, one brush, but the, and the properties, the, the, the thickness of the line, the right colors, and find the style, get back to the or original artwork and providing also the missing interval frames. Um, and at the same time, the ink is obviously the final drawing that you can see in the animation. So this is uh, the three animation layers you find, and you also find uh, a, a set. Damien, uh, who worked with us, precisely calculated also the speed of the set to have a perfect loop, because one of the demands was to have this being looped, and, and not there is no cut in the animation and stuff like that. Um, but we wanted more than just this, this uh, 10 second loop. Inside the animation, there is three third loops. So the first one is the idle, and then the push, and then the trick. Uh, they can all work. Uh, you can just use one of the loops or mix them together. Uh, but when you are doing, I don't know, uh, um, working on a texture system to put on the dress, you want to have a, a nice demo looping so people can see and there is no jump and you can focus on something. So we asked the animator to, to include that in her animation. Um, and then uh, there is also specific elements such as the clothes, the air, the props, which are animated in different layers. So you can get rid of them and focus on, on a problem if you want. Uh, so if you want to work on a new system to animate a soft body 2D physique on dresses, well, you can just remove the dress and, and add the, your uh, model on, on top of it. Um, and now to know what are the use case of this scene, I'll just yeah, let Amelie talk about that. So what are the use cases? <laughs> uh, I think there's a lot, so we're gonna present just a few that we thought about or worked on already. Uh, the first one is the first add-on that I act actually made in a Blender. Uh, it's the color picker, so for this it's more for illustrating the tool. That uh, actually Colin, who did the ink and paint, uh, already used the color picker on another production, so she was able to create the palette and create all the thing and use it. So we are going to share also this palette so that people can try the color picker and uh, eventually like, uh, and also like try it on the scene itself. Another possible um, use case will be to test for color changes. So we did uh, a small like a color mapper, which is the beginning of a development that uh, uh, we started last year. And I think for like uh, changing color scheme, like changing the lighting in 2D and stuff like this, it could be great to test it on this scene. Uh, and especially since the background is also made in grease pencil, you can completely change the color of the image uh, within Blender. Uh, the, only, uh, the other thing also is uh, the stroke mapping that I talked about earlier. Uh, so, as Flavio said, there are small details in the dress and also in the freckles in the skin that we want to see if we're able to like help including this in the animation, uh, not by uh, drawing it in every single frame, but see how can we uh, develop tools to help that. And then uh, two ideas of uh, development that we didn't start on, that, but maybe in the future, or maybe uh, you want to do it. <laughs> uh, first is interpolation, of course. It's a really big topic in 2D. Um, so I think this kind of scene can be useful to test. Like in the either part, it might be easier to do interpolation. And then in the, the trick part, it, uh, it comes with many challenges because the, personage, uh, the character makes a turn uh, and then another thing that uh, could be interesting in, is uh, doing clean assist, meaning like uh, from rough to ink, maybe not automatically, but maybe have some tool to help in this step because we know that uh, it can be a bit long to do. Uh, and since we are providing all the steps of the fabrication, it might be uh, uh, useful to, uh, to test these algorithms. So, 
the scene is available on our GitLab, the Blender scene, as well uh, as uh, we are going to put all the um, designs, early designs that um, Leah made. And uh, yeah, you can download it and test it and uh, use it on your papers, on your presentation that's made for that. <laughs> so then, uh, Flavio. <laughs> yeah. So this concludes our first example of tools made to help traditional uh, digital 2D animation. Uh, we have also another research act, which is how can 2D help 3D in, uh, in the studio from its render to create more visual hybrid solution and techniques. So last year we presented uh, also, I mean, you saw some extracts in the, in the demo reel of this project and the idea was to uh, use grease pencil to draw the smears but then uh, made a 3D triangulation from that to have a nice uh, 3D shape that we can uh, shade uh, and, uh, and light in a proper way so it integrates with uh, the character with a nice shading. Uh, um, you, can show, you can check Amelie's last year talk if you want on our Taking Care blog uh, if you want. At the same time of this last summer, we were working on this pilot and also on a 2D feature film and two of the compositing artists of the feature, Julien, which is here, Julien Delol, and Jean-Baptiste Marchand, started creating great paper cutout stuff um, on evenings with the materials of the company. And actually they did an exhibition uh, at the end of the last, last year's summer. So there is this part of this exhibition. It's made of, out of paper cut. Um, and it was amazing. Uh, this is actually me. <laughs> and my kids on, on, on the other side. Uh, I love this illustration and the mood of it. Uh, it's designed on computer. This is drawn on Krita. It's uh, then splitted in vectorial blocks using Illustrator. And uh, then the final cut is made with a computer controlled cutting machine. Uh, and here you have, and each piece, each part, each piece, which are hundreds on this kind of poster, are caref carefully sticked together piece by piece to, to make a billboard. So we feel the physicality of it and the layers and the textures. Uh, it's great. And you have these little details all over the place. There is depth and it's subtle from far, but you feel it when you are close to the poster. You feel the, the depth and it's obvious from close. So we were wondering how we can, we can use that kind of stuff also in animation. Uh, there are some shorts and advertising made out of cut, cut, uh, cut out paper, but it's expensive because it's very long to cut and prepare and everything. So you don't see TV series or stuff like that with this technique um, because it's too time consuming. So uh, we made this mood board with paper inspired work from great authors. And you can see here the texture, the lighting was something we were very interested in. You know, the backlight and how the light spreads through the paper and stuff like that. So we want to include that in, in something more elaborate. So we had this mood board and we added a list of constraints we like. So we want depth, we want a paper style result, we want dynamic lighting, uh, it must be quick to animate. Uh, so there is flat design, no textures for now, uh, no constraints in terms of layer and shape for the animator, it's free to do whatever he wants. And we aim for a 10 second uh, uh, short. So uh, we asked Julien to create something and he made this concept art. Um, uh, I mean, with the goal of sharing the scene later, of course. Uh, Julien really likes drawing pigs, as you have made noticed in the, the billboard before. Uh, it's a subject you can see a lot on his Instagram. So he wanted to do a take on this famous uh, story. So we left the concept and it was a go for the next step. And here is the, the rough animation he made uh, in, the, in an afternoon. <laughs> it's very fast. Um, so we have this. So yeah, we loved it and we asked him to, to extend it actually. So it inclu includes the camera movement so we can put parallax and test this kind of stuff, uh, running cycle and stuff. So here is the, directly the final animation. There is no sound, I can do the <laughs> <laughs> So um, he made that in a couple of days. It, I mean, it's very fast grease pencil. And actually, actually everything in the scene is grease pencil. The, the background is grease pencil. There is no um, meshes here. Uh, 
there is no textures, uh, everything was done, drawn in grease pencil. Uh, there is 12 seconds of animation, 310 frames, five grease pencil objects and 24 layers, if you are interested in statistics. Uh, and yeah, so we have these already spatially uh, separated layer and stuff like that. You can see here the drawing, some, some of the shapes are not closed and stuff. So this was not in constraint. We wanted really him to be free to animate whatever he wanted. And uh, yeah, this is what we have. At the same time, yeah, so at the same time, uh, we, if we go back to the visual result we are looking for, in the mood board we have this image uh, from Mao Le Moine, uh, which is a paper cut uh, uh, school work made 10 years ago. And uh, it's a very nice design and a very smart usage of just one uh, sheet of paper, you know, it's and we wonder, can we do that in 3D? So this is our, our, our take on it. Damien made this um, to reproduce the concept. I think it catches well the paper effect and the deepness of it and the texture. So you can see here in the viewport what this looks like. You know, the, you know, the texture of the paper and stuff like that. So this was just a quick test. And uh, we wanted to apply this to, uh, to, to, to the grease pencil. So. Uh, we have a lot of issues to cal tackle, so I just asked Emily to handle that, and she will explain. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so the idea was to uh, go from the animation of Julien uh, in Grease Pencil and to get that kind of 3D effect. Uh, the take we had on it, so you can see like the in and out, uh, was to convert actually the Grease Pencil into a mesh or meshes so that we can use anything in Blender, like 3D Blender properly. You can put textures, materials, effects, of course, and lights, camera movement as you want, yeah. So how to do this? <laughs> so the basis of our algorithm is actually the same than last year, like convert a stroke, a grease pencil stroke into a mesh, so a triangulation algorithm basically in which we can add then some depth with some modifiers. You can also animate it through visibility parameter. So you're gonna have lots of meshes because for 2D, each frame is a different stroke, of course. So it's gonna be a different mesh at the end. But if you just do this, so I just added this here uh, two things. The first thing is the outline because for lines, we really want it to capture the same shape as what you, want, uh, you have in the screen. So you have to first compute the outline and then do the triangulation and also holes because it was, it felt like it was kind of important for the sliding effect to be able to have holes in the shapes. So in grease pencil holes are done with hole dot mat materials and then we included it in the triangulation which is done with the triangle library. So then you can do that for every single stroke of the animation. But what happens if you did do this and then try to render it is that you get these dark areas. And that's because when you draw in grease pencil, you, you do overlapping between shapes, of course. So at the end, it's gonna be in the same plane and overlapping and the rendering engine doesn't deal very well with this. And that's also because in grease pencil, the order of visibility of the strokes is decided by the order of when you draw, of course. So one thing you want to add right now is depth, like actually uh, really positioning the different meshes. So a first take on it, a first naive take is to compute, uh, create an algorithm to add some depth to every single stroke. And that's done by a greedy algorithm that just decides, uh, okay, the stroke is gonna be at the depth where at the lowest, uh, sorry, the lowest depths in which it doesn't overlap with another stroke. That's simple. So for example, here, the body of the rabbit is, uh, oh, you can't see my, of course, <laughs> it's fine. Uh, it's at depth zero because it's the first one that was drawn. Then the second one is the head and it actually overlaps with the body. So it gets depth one. And then for the ears, they get both depths two because they don't overlap with each other. So they can be at the same depth level. So the rendering that you can see on the right, it's better because then you don't have these dark areas. But what you can see is that you can see the outline. I don't know if I, you can actually see it. The outline of the ears and the head and it creates some cast shadows. And that's actually what we want 
but maybe not inside of the rabbit. Because when you draw this in grease pencil, you don't really see these uh, boundaries. And actually, you see them only if the drawing behind it has a different material or has a different color. So you want to include that in the algorithm. So now we are uh, computing the depths, but actually putting at the same depth level strokes that have the same material. And then you can merge them at the stroke level and then do the triangulation. So for example, here, the body and the head have the same material. So they get merged and they get triangulated. But for the ears, actually, they have a different material because they are stroke and not fill. So it's a different material in grease pencil. So actually, we just adjusted this so that it takes the color instead of the material because it felt like uh, it was better for like, uh, um, keeping the visual appearance of the drawing. So, yeah, so I'm just illustrating this, this point on this one, uh, this design. Uh, at the top, we are, oh, the, okay, <laughs> the text is not uh, very well displayed. Uh, at the top is the, the result when we separate by, by material. So you can see that the little details at the top are uh, pop out of the, the rest of the decor. And at the bottom is if when you do when, uh, color, with color. And in this case, the little details are merged with the rest of the shape. So it's just an aesthetic choice, I think. But for us, it felt like it was better to do it by color. Of course, this works only if you work with flat colors and not like textures and gradients. So I guess you have to come up with another solution for this. Uh, that's another result on the head of the, the wolf. So. Uh, at the left is the grease pencil, and on the right is the rendering with some cast shadows. It's a bit uh, subtle uh, right now, but you're going to see uh, in the result with the lighting how it uh, performs. So we did that for uh, at the frame level, so at drawing level, one frame, one layer, and it works well. But now what happens between layers? And for this, to illustrate this, um, here is the wolf, and you can see the different layers that were done in grease pencil in the top. And in particular, the arm is in another, uh, an OL layer, like uh, here. And there's two takes on this issue. Either you say, okay, each layer is going to be at a different depth, because you draw one layer and then paste one another on top of it. Or you say, no, every layer is just a, f a big pile of strokes. And you can merge in between layers. That's just two different takes of the issue. So we kept it as an option. And actually, you may, might want to do it differently per grease pencil object, depending on what you want to see. So here in the result, I don't know if you can see it, but on the left, the arm pops out of the shape. And then on the right, it just blended with the, the head of the, the wolf. So just some limitations that we saw. So the first one is a kind of an inconsistency between the triangulation that's used in grease pencil to display shapes and the triangle library one. So here, uh, I don't know if you can see the, the stroke on the left, but it's a bit misclosed and a bit messy and actually creates a hole in the triangulation. Um, for, to overcome this, we actually just fill the shape in the mesh because it was easier. And actually, it really happened uh, a few times, maybe less than 10 uh, strokes were had the, this issue in the whole animation. So it was okay. But uh, yeah, I don't have a solution for this. <laughs> and then another issue was um, connected to stroke ordering because sometimes different stroke ordering of the same drawing that would give the same result in grease pencil would uh, give different results in the rendering. So here, uh, two, two different ordering of the stroke give either like the nose of the wolf pops out or it's merged. Uh, so in this case, for, to solve it, you just have to go back to the crease pencil and change the, the stroke ordering, uh, which is a bit annoying actually, but also it was really less than 10 strokes of the whole animation, so we did it this way. Uh, that's really because the algorithm for uh, ordering uh, the, the depth 
is greedy and then it cannot go back on a decision he, it made uh, before. So maybe there's a better algorithm for this, but for now it was just really little artifacts and was not in the whole animation, so it was okay. Um, the last thing I didn't talk about was non-planar strokes. And actually, while we de dealt with this, with the triangulation, our triangulation can deal with non-planar stroke. We didn't really deal with it in this case because first, Julien didn't draw any non-planar stroke because it's not really easy to do this in grease pencil and you, it's not really uh, intuitive. And also, I don't exactly know how it will behave with the visibility and the layers and stuff like this. So I guess it's still an open issue for me. So if you want to tackle it. <laughs> Uh, so, now that I've talked a lot, I'm going to show you the result and then uh, discuss the rendering. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Okay, uh, so uh, here is uh, an overview of the scene with the shading and lighting. Uh, I don't know if it's... Okay, so there's um, ambient light that is blue so that it creates a night effect. Then you can see uh, there are aerial lights in between layers of the, the background. Uh, there's a, a backlight on the on the little light that the pig has. And also we put some emissive uh, material so that it uh, emits lights from the material of the, the, the little uh, lantern. <laughs> uh, you can also see that, oh, sorry. Okay, you can also see that uh, we used some uh, transparency in the house so that we can see the shadow and the silhouette of the pig while it, while it enters the house. Uh, we're gonna see it. So that's the emissive uh, material. Yeah, so here we can see the silhouette of the, the pig. And then for the wolf, we, um, we put a light on it that follows him. It's a bit like in theater, you know? Um, so yeah, we did that to see it uh, more in focus. You can see the area lights here. Uh, some of them are, actually have negative values to darken the foreground. And uh, yeah, so it's a bit uh, mix between stuff that we could do in stop motion, like putting lights in some places, but also stuff that we couldn't really do, like putting emissive material and actually have light popping out of the paper and also the negative uh, values of the, the light, of course. So here you can see a comparison between the crisp pencil and the 3D rendering. Uh, in particular, the, the background that uh, gained many, many like depths because of the different uh, lights uh, on, yeah, on the background. So that's it. Uh, our GitLab is uh, full of uh, tools that we <laughs> all share and also these open sequences if you want to test them. We also have a technical blog, which is uh, sometimes uh, f filled with articles. <laughs> and uh, also we added a page on our website for all the tools and uh, technical stuff. So, yeah. Thanks. Before the question, I will just show you, this is a composite version made by Julien of this sequence. So this scene is available. We are going to add some more material soon, which, is our, which are the, actually the, the first background test we didn't include in the Blender file, but you can get them. And uh, here is the, uh, th this, so this is act actually, this is out of lighting from, from Blender. There is no compositing. The lighting is, uh, was made last, last week, so it's uh, pretty recent. So it's not finished. Uh, and um, this scene will be available in our Git in the incoming weeks. We didn't have finished it yet, so yeah. So thanks for your attention. So do you have any questions, maybe? Yes. I just want um, it's about the second scene. Yeah. So we even talked that is there already a super good test scene for um, jump, jump multiplication, but you didn't do live uh, maturation. You did it as a question. So 
Oh yeah, okay. Uh, the question is uh, for the the scene with the pig. When I converting the g grease pencil to the mesh, I did it at once and not like real time, uh, like it would be done in geometry nodes. Uh, actually, I'm just using a Python script and convert, and then it becomes a mesh, and that's it. I'm not uh, going out of Blender. So for the question is how how can we have an animated mesh stored in Blender? Actually, so there's lots of meshes and it's animated by visibility attributes on the object <laughs> because I, there, there was no other way. So, <laughs> but yeah, if there's a geometry node solution for this, <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> Yeah, so the question is when we uh, do this depth positioning, how can we keep the visual aspect? Actually, in the, in the slide that I show, I purposely uh, just widen the gap between the d different meshes, but in the real scene, it's way more closer. So I have a parameter to like for the thickness of the paper and also another one for the gap. But usually it's really, really small. It's just for the rendering engine to be okay with it. So. Is there another question? Okay, thank you for coming. <laughs>